Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are doing a springtime gear review, talking about new rods and reels, ultra high end rods, mid range, and really affordable budget rods and reels this time around, as well as a bunch of baits, some line, just a variety of new products that we've been playing with throughout the spring that we think will help your fishing. So we're gonna run through this stuff, come along. Got a handful of rods and reels that I wanna to talk to you about. We actually got more affordable than we typically do, uh, but I'm gonna save that to the end. Let's start with the line and the bait. First one is this guy right here. FC100 System Leader by Sunline. Now, if you guys survived to the end of a 40 minute swim bait video a couple weeks ago, you already got the tip off on this and you're already using it and you know how awesome it is. But I know that a lot of people didn't make it to the end of that video, so we're gonna put it front and center this time, give you a second shot. Short version of the story, I use Braid to Leader for almost everything. I use Mono as my leader because Mono is better at absorbing shock and really can save you right at the boat. You know, when those fish come up and surge, if you're using fluorocarbon leader, it can literally shatter on you. The other advantage is that when you're tying your connection knot, it's a lot easier to burn fluorocarbon than it is mono. Mono is just more forgiving all around. However, mono is not as clear as fluoro. So there are times when visibility is an issue. Insert the shock leader or system leader. Uh, I started playing with fluorocarbon shock leaders a few years ago, but it takes me a long time to build up confidence in a product to the point that I'm willing to tell you guys about it and encourage you to do it. I really put it through the paces ahead of time, make sure that something's not gonna pop up later. I wanna know that I know that it will make a difference. So I've caught a bunch of giant striper, bunch of giant largemouth, done a ton of fishing with this stuff. Essentially, it has all the same benefits of mono. It's got a ton of stretch, a ton of give, but it also have the has the benefits of fluoro. It's very, very clear. It's hard for the fish to see, even in the larger sizes. So they make it from 16 pound up to, I mean, up through the roof. I use it all the way up to 50 pound uh, when I'm striper fishing. But for largemouth, my number one size is 35. That's what I swim bait with. When I use mono, I use 30, but this stuff is thinner and cle more clear. So I use 35 pound because I'm not losing anything and I'm gaining a ton of strength. But the 16, the 20, the 25 are awesome for throwing reaction baits, for throwing a jig, for throwing smaller swim baits. Uh, it's gonna make a big difference. It's got a ton of give and it doesn't spring. It doesn't get that coil where you've gotta clip it off and tie a new leader anywhere near as quickly as mono does. It's worth checking out. All right. Product number two, River to Sea Stand and Yabby is back. If you guys aren't familiar with that bait, essentially it's a craw bait, but it stands up on end. And it had a cult following a few years ago. They went off the market, they just came back. Next, I'm gonna talk about this one right here. This little guy, Hog Farmer Spunk Shad. This little one I picked up in the fall. You guys, most of you watched our chatterbait video last year. You know how addicted we are to throwing a chatterbait and how addicted we are to getting the action and the movement right in the trailer. I talked about taking a Kitek, clipping the tail just right so that the bait itself and the trailer match each other coming through the water. You don't have a big slow trailer behind a really tight lip. Well, this spunk shad is essentially a perfect trailer in replacement of chopping up Kitex. Uh, when I discovered this thing and threw it on the back of a chatterbait, the blade and the tail are perfect matches straight out of the pack. You don't have to go chopping up your baits. That spunk shad is worth checking out. A couple more for you. This little bugger. This one comes courtesy of Tim. That's that little Z-Man jig and then that little Z-Man craw on the back of it. When you wanna talk about a compact little jig, here's my normal pitching jig. 
with a beaver that's been cut down for size comparison to this little fella. I mean, it's a tiny little jig, but he did some serious damage on some smallmouth with this lately. We'd been hearing about it. You know, not all these products are brand new. They're just products that we finally put enough time into that we're willing to say, yeah, these are awesome. This little bugger did some damage this spring. Two more, worms. We're gonna do the bigger one first. If you guys aren't familiar with Magnum baits, they, they have just a very quiet following. This is a 10 inch stick bait, a Senko if you will. Big old giant Senko. I had heard guys talking about throwing them, but I just didn't have an application for a giant Senko until we went to Mexico. So I picked some up before we went down there. I smashed on fish down there with this thing. And then I started throwing it when I got home because what I noticed when I was down there is I was catching big ones on it, but I was also catching little ones on it. Uh, you can rig it, in fact, I've got one tied on right here. You can rig it Texas rigs on a big old giant hook, but you can also throw it on just a regular like three aught or four aught finesse wide gap hook and just wacky rig it and an awesome hookup ratio doing that despite the size of the bait and it definitely upsize your upsizes your catch i'm catching two and three pounders on it but i'm catching a lot of really good fish on it as well and last but not least z-man the fatty z when summer arrives i'm a shaky head fanatic and i'm always looking for different worms this fatty Z, it's essentially a big trick worm, but it's made of Z-Man's Elastec. So it just gives and gives and gives and gives. The stuff is amazing. Loaded with salt. It's got that trick worm style tail. Great action on a shaky head. If you're looking for a larger size worm, this is a great choice. We threw the eight inch bull worm a ton last year. I started mixing this in is very happy with both of them. So if you wanna give your fish a different presentation and a bait that's going to last a long time on your hook, you know Elastec is gonna last and last and last. That is a great choice. Now, moving on to rods and reels, we're gonna go high end to low end. We were actually using this rod quite a bit this fall and linked it in a few videos. But then we got all sorts of people asking why we never use them. So obviously people didn't catch on that we had been playing with this rod. This is the uh, Gary Loomis edge rods. I scooped one up to try it out. This is actually the seven foot heavy. I just picked up the one. I just wanted to know what the fuss is about. You know, Gary Loomis, obviously original designer of all the Loomis rods. Uh, he knows rods, he's built some amazing products. So when he came out with the edge rods, I wanted to see what the fuss was about. Uh, very happy with the rod. Lightweight, they're a pricey rod. They're a very pricey rod. Um, but are they worth the money? In my opinion, yes. He's doing some different things. Graphite handles, uh, it's got good balance. It was comfortable. I caught a ton of underspin fish on this rod with this fall. Uh, bigger underspin fish, like a three quarter ounce underspin with a big hook. And I loved it. I was feeling bites way, way out, down deep, 40, 50 feet deep. It's a nice rod for the price. Uh, I would say that it feels, sensitivity-wise, it's going to feel a lot like maybe right around a, a G Loomis GLX or IMX Pro. Uh, it feels a lot like a Dobbins Champion Extreme. Uh, it's just a, a high-end, very nice rod. Next one, mid-range, Mega Bass Levante. They redid the Levante. This is the Levante 2019. This is the perfect pitch. I picked up two. I picked up the perfect pitch, and I picked up their great big swim bait rod. Uh, I think that's the Leviathan, and I really like them both. The Leviathan is a, a very stout rod, but it's more moderate. It flexes through the middle of the blank, so it's actually a really, really, really good treble hook rod, uh, wake bait rod, glide bait rod, you know, six to eight inch soft baits with a belly treble on them. It's gonna be great for all that stuff. Uh, I was very impressed with it. And then the perfect pitch, I actually picked up this one because it has a slightly shorter handle 
And for us slightly portly fellows, I've been out on the kayak a lot lately, you guys know that. On the kayak, your stomach gets in the way, even if you're a skinny guy. If you're not a skinny guy, it's really in the way. So I went to this rod on purpose because it was slightly shorter and I loved it. And I don't just love it for the kayak, it's a very comfortable rod. They come in, I think at 200 bucks if I'm not mistaken. The new Levantes are a huge step above the old Levantes. Uh, I've been really impressed with this and I've already caught a pile of fish on it. And then last but not least, we'll wrap it up on this one. Daiwa Aired X. We picked some of these up just to try something different. Uh, we told you guys we typically don't dip below the $99 mark. And the reason why is that below $99, there are huge leaps between products and it's incredibly inconsistent. Uh, that said, we know that a lot of people are still up in that budget range below a hundred bucks and we're constantly looking for you. And when we do find products, we want to tell you about them. So the Aired X picked these up, uh, a casting rod and a spinning rod. And I'm, I'm happy with both of them. They are extremely moderate, meaning they flex way into the middle of the blank. Uh, not just up in the tip section. They're not an extra fast or a fast. I don't know how they label them. I didn't even look, uh, but they are extremely moderate compared to other rods, but they're gonna be great for reaction baits, you know, for top water, for cranking, for a chatter bait, for a spinner bait. Uh, and then, you know, they're fine for bottom fishing too, because a moderate rod, you can watch the tip section. We've talked to you guys about looking for deflection rather than waiting to feel the bite. You get a feel for how far your rod tip moves when you're pulling a bait. And if it moves farther than that, you set the hook. So sensitivity on a $59 rod, obviously lower than sensitivity on a three to $500 rod, uh, but you can still watch deflection and stick fish early that way. Uh, but all in all, very nice rods for the price. Paired that up uh, with a Shimano Sahara, which was a new one for me. I picked that up for one of my trout rods and then really liked it. So I picked up a couple more and paired them up with these and uh, have been very, very happy with that reel as well. I think it's right around 79 bucks. Uh, both great options at a lower price point than what we normally talk about. Uh, but again, great for reaction baits power fish in cover and water and then if you get the longer length seven foot or longer it's going to be good for for dragging on bottom too just watch for that deflection there's a bunch of products for you guys springtime is prime time i love this time of year i know you guys do too you're excited to get out there on the water i love playing with new tackle so does tim we're always trying new things we're both tackle junkies so uh, these are the ones that stood out for me and for Tim so far this spring. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you and we'll talk to you soon.